Have you ever given up on a project because horizontal scrolling seemed impossible? Those days are over. Today you'll master it. No coding required. In this video we're gonna construct a real life example. A page where at some point you want to change the scroll direction to horizontal and then after a while change it back to vertical and all in reverse when scrolling up. We'll do that with the help of the GSAP library and the animation panel from Bricksforge. And by the way you can download all templates in the video description. Thrilled to get started? Let's get going. We have three sections. Number one, number two with three containers. One, two, three and the third section. That's all. Let's look at the structure in detail. You want to listen. The first section has a height of 100 VH and contains a headline and of course this gradient but that's just for the looks. The third section is a copy of this. Nothing different in the structure. Now to the second section. The one that should scroll horizontal in our case. It has no height. But the containers in it have a height. 100 VH and a width of 100 VW. That's all. Almost. One important setting left. At first all containers are stacked below each other. Good for editing. But for the animation to work set the flexbox setting on the second section to horizontal. Now normally you could scroll to the right but I have set overflow X to hidden in the page settings under custom code. If we take that out and look at the front end you can see your page can be moved to the right and we don't want that. So we copy that back in. So if you want to edit the other containers I suggest to unset the flex direction. We leave it turned on. Now to the GSAP animation. We open the Bricksforge panel, go to Timelines, create one. I already did. Leave the trigger as scroll trigger. Now we need a trigger selector. This is our second section which contains the three containers. I have renamed the section ID and inputted it here in a trigger selector. You could also work with a class. Now we set up the start and end of the animation. What do we determine here? Let's turn on the markers, which I already did. So we're seeing what we're doing in the front end. When the top of our second section reaches the top of the screen, we want to fix it. In GSAP terms, to pin it. That's why we turn on use pin in the back end. Leave every default setting here as is. Back to the start and end animation settings. We can't work with the default here. We write when the top of the trigger selector, which is our second section, reaches the top of the screen, then the screen gets pinned. All right? So this now has a clear relation to the use pin function or option. And this will make more sense in a second. What about the scroll end? Now we define how long it's pinned. Also, we can't work with the default here. Rewrite plus is equal 100%. That means when you have scrolled 100% of the height of the screen of your second section. Now let's also turn on scrub, which is the option to connect the animation with our mouse scrolling because we want to control the horizontal scrolling with our mouse. Nothing else to do here in the settings. Now open the timeline and add one. I already did. You can give it a name to stay organized. You use the same selector to animate our second section because we want to animate the horizontal scrolling. Now there's just one thing to set up here. We want to move the whole section with all three containers to the left. So open up translate, click on percentage then input 100 minus. Now let's look what it does. It scrolls it 100% the width of my section to the left. But we have one more container so we have to input minus 200. Now let's run this and you can see now it moves all containers to the left. So remember you can throw in as many containers as you like, 
but each container adds 100% to translate. And now the horizontal scrolling already works. Let me show you. We move the second section up to the top of the screen. Here you can see our markers. The top of the section to the top of the screen. Now it gets pinned. Then, since it's connected to the mouse scroll with scrub, it animates the second section with its three containers 200% to the left. And here you can see the end marker moving to the top and now it's unpinned after a scroll of 100% the height of one section. And now we scroll down again to the last section. Back again, all happens automatically in reverse. And that's basically all. It's as easy as this. Can you believe it? Now, before you try this by yourself or you download these templates for free, link is in the video description, you should know two important things. At first, you can control how fast or slow the horizontal scroll runs. With the scrub value, you add an after scroll, three, or let's say 10, adds a massive after scroll after you've touched the mouse. Let me show you. I touch the mouse and it still runs. I touch the mouse again and it runs and runs. In contrary, when you input 0.5 and save, then you can see that the scroll really stops abruptly. And when you, let's put that back to 1, play with the scroll end and for instance say 200% save, the user now has to scroll the amount of two heights of the screen. So 200% screen height. You can see that now finally the marker comes up and this all results in a longer scroll. So I let the user scroll way more to get through the three containers. You could of course say also do that, do 1000% and then you can see you make the user scroll very much to get through, but this all depends on you. I leave it just with 100%. Second, does this work responsively? And the answer is yes, but first it didn't until I had to input the trigger class of your second section, this one, back in here. Then it worked. When I took it off again, it still worked. I don't know the reason, but it works on my iPhone 13 with Safari and Chrome and hopefully with your mobile too. We can leave that in here. Last notes. Remember to turn off the markers at the end and remember to have overflow set to hidden under your page settings under custom code. Have fun trying this all out. And if you're ever going to use it in a real life project, let me know in one of the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you in one of my other videos.